For more on how the volatility in oil prices may affect your investments, especially in the new year, our expert market panelists are here, Jonas Max Ferris and Ty Young. So, Jonas, how low could oil go in 2016? Will U.S. consumers spend more? It could go into the low 20s, which would cause huge problems in our country, not to mention all of the half the emerging markets that are there pumping out crude. The problem is, is that there was so much overinvestment into these areas that they still haven't cut down production from the shale areas. They've only down a few percent in production volume, even though they've cut all the rigs and all the people. They're just so efficient at it now, and they, they're making huge debt payments to all the distressed junk bonds they issued. So now they're not going to, they can't stop pumping, neither can Saudi Arabia. So it could just could cascade. It could go lower than it did in 08, which was a huge recession, which we obviously don't have right now. And the minor economic benefits to consumers of the cheap gas will be far exceeded by the firing and the collapse and the defaults if we go into the 20s next year in oil. Okay, so that is a fair point, Jonas. Ty, do you agree that in the 20s, oil becomes dangerous for the U.S. economy versus helpful uh, for the one or two extra birthday gifts that somebody's going to get? Um, I, I totally agree. I think Jonas is right. The, the fact is that if, if, if oil goes into the 20s, and we think it's going to, um, you do get cheaper prices at the pump. We may see dramatically lower gas prices, but it's a leading indicator that the economy is not doing well, that economies are contracting, not only here in the United States, but around the world. And there's other evidence of that, but, but because of the, the less, lower demand for oil, we think that hurts the, uh, that, that's an indicator that the economy is not doing well and bad for jobs. Okay, so I'm going to pick up on both of your points. How much do we need to worry then about the broader markets? I mean, we did see energy drag, if you like, on the Dow. In fact, it snapped a four-day winning streak. That average now negative for the year. So, Jonas, is this just the sign of things to come? I, I think it would have to go a lot lower. If it just stays in the mid-30s, the rest of the economy is doing okay. There's still areas in the stock market that are fine. It's when you get to the point where there's massive defaults and then all high-yield debt, all of a sudden no one wants to buy any of that kind of debt, and then other companies have problems. The yield curves, you know, the, the spread between junk bonds and, and will get really wide if that happened, it kind of like the housing collapse. Then it spirals out and you can have a recession. That's not going to happen. That's just a possible scenario. At these levels, and if it drips up higher, although I don't see $50 plus oil in the next 10 years adjusting for inflation, will be fine. other parts of healthcare, they're doing fine. Technology, it's not going to ruin everybody's game until the whole industry is in major, major trouble. Okay, so healthcare and tech is where you would put new money in the stock market. Ty, are you on board with those two ideas? Well, a little. I see it a little differently. Markets follow oil. We think oil goes into the uh, into the mid 20s, and we think the market goes down um, a good bit at the beginning of the year. We think the market goes down before it goes up. the The artificial the artificial stimulus to the market is now gone. The Fed is now raising interest rates instead of holding them at zero. QE is all but gone. So we think the market comes down um, to the growth rate of the economy. The economy's grown at two percent over the last five or six years. We think the market comes down to those levels before it. Goes back up. So, so I Ty, if I'm hearing you correctly, no new money in stocks for the first quarter. No, no new money in stocks. When people come to us, they want their money protected against losses. They want to earn a reasonable rate of return, and we achieve that right now through structured products. Okay, through structured products and more, obviously, in the bond market. Well, structured no, products well, are the bond. I mean, you're taking loans with insurance companies. That's all it is. If an insurance company fails, you're going to lose your money, just like if you lent it to an oil company. In theory, it's not as risky as that, but it is a debt instrument. It's not equity. I still think equities are cheaper than stocks over a 10-year time horizon. Neither is going to have a particularly great return, and there will be some volatility. But that's still, with a 2% growing yield, you're not going to do worse than bonds over 10 years or any kind of high commission annuity or structured product. It's almost impossible. Okay, we'll take your advice, both of you. Thank see you that, very much. I see much. it a little bit differently. Go there. ahead, Ty. You can have the last word. I, I, see, I, see it, I see it a little bit differently. A guaranteed insurance contract, your money is protected even if the company defaults because of the reserves. Well, and when the market goes up, you go up with it and your gains you lose, lock in. You lose the market goes down, you don't lose anything. Ty, the fact is, that's you, lose the a ten, you lose a near 10% sales commission the day you buy it. If you had to sell in three months for some no, reason, you that don't. No, gone, you don't. Right? Your money is completely protected against losses. You can take out but 10% per year. You make a time commitment. And 
in exchange for having your money protected and getting the growth. But, but you, you can't point, sell it without a redemption fees, commission, right? correct? Jonathan I mean, there's always a hidden redemption fee that would be almost 10% there, that would pay no, out. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing hidden, Jonas. There is a surrender charge, just like if the market And how high, how high you can sell, the surrender sell, charge go? Well, there's no surrender charge if you buy an index fund from Vanguard. You could sell a week after you buy it. Unless, unless the market, the market goes in half. If the market goes in half and you sell, that's a 50% fee. Well, well, how high can the surrender charge be if you need your money back in a month or two? It, it, can, go, it, can, go, it can go as high as 10%, but you do make well, a Well, that's a lot to lose in commission right. in a few weeks, I would Jonas, think. Jonas, I'm taking your point on reading the well, fine print. Well, if you print. sell it out, it's make a long-term long investment. All right, we hear what you're saying. Hold for a long time, but Thank Jonas, you. you're right. Those fees, you have to pay attention. Read the fine prints.